Hey everybody, how's it going? This is going to be another Legends of 40k uh, video, going in the slideshow format because those of you that actually watch and not just listen like the format it seems, so that's good. You can also just listen to this stuff and go about your business, paint up a model, do something, I don't know, you know, kind of do two things at once there, but the slideshow format seems to be like, so I'll continue with it. And this time I'm looking at Huron Blackheart, and remember in Legends of 40k I go over the special character in detail, I'll give you the point cost, stat line, all that jazz about this particular special character. I go over their specific special rules and war gear that's unique to them, and then I go over my thoughts on their model if they have one, and my thoughts on using them in an army. So, I'm going to be looking at Huron Blackheart this time. He is 160 points. He is weapon skill 6, ballistic skill of 5, strength and toughness of 4, 3 wounds, initiative 5, 3 attacks, leadership 10, with a 3 plus save. He's infantry, unique. He has war gear, power armor, power axe, frag and crack grenades, sigil of corruption, the tyrant's claw, master of deception is a warlord trait, and the tyrant's claw is a chaos artifact. And special rules, champion of chaos, fearless, the hamadria, independent character, and veterans of the long war. So, unique to him is the Hamadria. It's a combat familiar, which makes Huron a Psyker Mastery Level 1. So it's a combat familiar, and this is in addition to being that. It makes Huron a Psyker Mastery Level 1, granting him a, gen a randomly generated power as follows. At the beginning of each of your turns, you roll a d3 on the table below. Then, randomly generate one Psychic power from that discipline as if you were rolling for a Mastery Level 1 Psyker, with the exception that you cannot swap to the Primaris power. The generated power may only be used during that turn only. So, what that basically means is at the beginning of your turn, you roll a die, uh, a d, you know, a d3 basically. You get either biomancy, pyromancy, or divination. Whichever one you get, then you randomly generate one power from it, just like you would for a normal psyker. But the only difference is you cannot swap to the primaris power, which is kind of like a default power. You cannot swap. You just get what you get. And he has the chaos artifact, the tyrant's claw. Now the tyrant's claw incorporates a heavy flamer and on top of that it gives them in close combat strength of plus two AP of three and it's melee armor bane shred and specialist weapon so that's Huron Blackheart and uh, let's talk about his model so I like his model he has a model some fine cast so it'll be around for a good long while I would imagine and I like his model you know, Huron Blackheart used to lead the Astral Claws, and he was called Lug Huron or something like that. And he he was in Terminator armor, you know, at least he is now in um, the Bedab War Imperial, Ar Imperial um, armor books. And now he's in Power armor. That's neither here nor there. What happened to him, which is part of the reason why he looks the way he does, is he was nearly killed by a Melt of Blast. It basically annihilated the right side of his body. So the Tyrant's Claws are full-on bionic limb. You can see his face has been reconstructed a bit here and there. He looks kind of like almost zombie-esque, which is a little bit too extreme for my liking for his face. But I think the rest of him has done very well. And you see a bunch of piping and cables snaking through his armor because he's basically part bionic, part um, chaos space marine, basically. So I think his model is nice. I like the opposing. It looks like he's about to burn people alive. The Hamadria looks suitably creepy. He's holding the power axe at a good angle. He's not overly dynamic, and he's not just completely statue static. And I like the nice touch of having the fuel container for the heavy flamer on his backpack. It makes it more mechanical in nature because it ha has an actual fuel container that has a pipe that goes through his bionic limb to the tyrant's claw itself. So, um, I think he looks pretty cool. I do. Now... The only thing that would be better is if they were able to, if they were going to redo them, because there's an artwork. I'll see if I can try and find a picture of the artwork I'm talking about to put it up. Um, where he's holding, like, the upper half of a human torso in his tyrant claw, and it's on a fire. And it just looks really cool. And that would be a really awesome pose if they were able to get it done right. But that would be complicated to paint for a lot of people. So all in all, I think this posing is done very nice. It, it's got a suitably pirate type of feel because the Red Corsairs are basically space pirates um chaos space marine warband pirate stuff but he does have a nice feel to him in terms of you he's very distinct 
there's no way to mistake him for somebody else on the battlefield because of his war gear. So with that being said, um, I haven't seen him in person to be honest with you, but all the pictures I have seen of him, he looks like a good model. I haven't seen him in person, I don't know what the back of him looks like in person or anything like that, but the model itself looks like a very um, detailed model and something that could be a lot of fun to paint. So, with that being said, let's talk about using uh, using uh, Huron. Talk about his entry and using him in the game. So, uh, he is a lot less than Abaddon, for sure, when it comes to point costs. And, unlike Abaddon, he is not going to form the central f uh, strategy of your army. When I talk about Legends 40k with Abaddon... I talked about how he's really a special character that you're going to build your list around and build your tactics around. Huron is not that way. Huron is going to fulfill a role and is going to complement your force nicely. And he's supposed to lead the Red Corsairs, so if you want to build a fluffy with the Red Corsairs, you can have Chaos Spikers that kind of fit in here. Um, he does kind of lead a, a, a Corsair-style pir uh, pirate force thing. So if you wanted to, I would even say you could include some cultists. Just some rabble he that he's got fighting for him uses cannon fodder. You know he doesn't care about their well-being. There's their um, basically f fighting slaves or something like that that uh, he has and uses. If you want to even go that route, I would say you can make it work. But uh, Huron himself, you know, you build your force the way you want to build your force. But the way I would use Huron, since you're not building an army around him, you can pay, take pretty much whatever you want. I would use him really to deal with infantry. He can deal with light vehicles like like a rhino, uh, a truck, uh, a land speeder if he can hit it, uh, stuff like that. So you can you can go into the realm of vehicle a little bit, but that really means uh, you're going to be sacrificing, I think, his his real strength, which is dealing with infantry. Heavy infantry he can deal with pretty well because of the Tyrant's Claw and the Axe if you need to go with the Axe. Uh, he's also really good at dealing with Horde because of the Tyrant's Claw, you know, having the built-in Heavy Flamer. So the way I would use him personally is I would take him with a squad of Chosen. Uh, and the Chosen I would have maybe have um, minor upgrades in the Chosen. Nothing crazy. They can take a decent amount of template weapons in a chosen squad. So I've taken two template weapons in a chosen squad, to be honest. And then maybe one or two guys really kit it out for melee. And then maybe have one of them have a power fist, or one of them have lightning claws, whatever it is. Something like that, and the rest just be pretty much as cheap as you can keep them. And put them in a rhino. Take nine of them, put them in a rhino with Huron Blackheart. It's going to keep a low enough profile where he won't be super high on the target priority list. You know, especially if you're fielding something big like a Vindicator or a Land Raider in the army as well, some of the heat will be taken off of here on Blackheart. And the way I would use him is to go and make contact with enemy infantry. Even against a, a 10 man tactical squad, you know, a Space Marine squad, they don't like multiple templates dropped on them. It's just not fun. They don't like it. So you're going to have Huron's template and then two regular flamer templates basically so if there's two regular flamer templates get a total of let's say only six guys in total and then Huron can get maybe um, five squads you know five guys or three even if they all get three that's nine wounds that you just have to roll the wound with three of which if you're going three three and three here that have a very good chance of wounding in comparison to um, the flamer and that's before you count any bolt pistol shots or anything so that can hurt uh, a Space Marine squad for sure. And against Horde, um, they pr those are pretty much guaranteed wounds if you roll the wound. It's pretty much not going to be able to make a save, because most of the time the Horde save would be a lot worse than the armor piercing value of even a regular Flamer. So um, that can really help thin out the Horde a bit. You know, if you're shooting at a f an untouched um, Orc Boy squad, and you got the two templates and, and his template to hit them, chances are they're hitting a lot. You may be able to do have a lot of dice to roll and wounds that almost equal a full 30-boy orc squad. Or maybe you will, because you have a total of three different templates hitting it. You could really thin them out pretty well. So, you know, it all depends on the sh how you get it lined up and everything, but you could really thin them down. And... The goal would be, since you're popping out a rhino, you can't sh charge right away. You just unload uh, your firepower 
and then anything next turn, depending on how you have them lined up, they can move forward and continue their relentless f uh, firepower, or get into close combat and tear things up as well. That's how I would use Huron Blackheart. The rest of your force, have him and maybe have a backup squad that moves around with them or in case they get shot to pieces or whatever it is. Another squad that can fill that type of role. Or squads, you know, depending on how you want to break it up. But really, the rest of your force can deal with the, the uh, super elite infantry like Terminators. The rest of your force can deal with he heavy vehicles like fighting off other land raiders or a Lehman Ross or anything like that. And... Huron and his force can do really well at dealing with uh, hordes of infantry, medium to heavy infantry. I wouldn't necessarily put him up against Terminators, just because he would need to use the axe to really be guaranteed a, a wound if he makes it, and then he's going at initiative one basically, and if it's a whole bunch of power fisting um, <laughs> Terminators, he's going to go at the same time, maybe he takes a couple down, but they can also really bring the pain to him, uh, potentially. So you don't want to take that much of a chance. But I would say he's pretty good to try and get stuck in against those um, bothersome Tau battle suits. Him and a squad of Chosen can make pretty good work of those as well. So that's how I would use Huron Blackheart personally. The rest of your force, you can build it super fluffy. It's kind of like a, a hard-hitting, fast raiding force of regular Sayers. You can build it more CG if you want to. You can include cultists if you want. But however you build it... Just don't try and make Huron the central pivotal part of your force. He's not that much of a beat stick. And it's not necessary, really. You'd be better off having him complement the rest of your force because he fills a very nice role. And if you give him a squad of chosen to back him up and a rhino, they will fulfill that role very well and kind of stay on the radar a little bit. Obviously, they're going to know where, they're going to keep an eye on where he's going. But in comparison to somebody like Abaddon or somebody like Marnaeus Calgar or, um, things of that nature, something like um, uh, just uh, Dante, I forgot his name for a second, something like that, that's a much more high priority for people to really focus on and try and deal with right away. They may notice where Huron Blackheart goes, but they may not pay too much mind to him in comparison to one of those characters. I mean, we personally like to keep an eye on everything, but you know, you may have a Vindicator, one of your uh, demon engines out there, a Land Raider, and that's going to have a bigger impact for me personally trying to take it down because those things are always nasty. And depending upon where Huron goes, what I position, Huron may not be that big. And that's another thing you have to keep in mind. Huron Blackheart may not always be in the best position. Your opponent may just move in a particular way to really negate what you're trying to do with Huron. But against things like Orcs, Tyranids, uh, Imperial Guard, fi uh, Tau, and if you got Eldar, you know, especially he's really good at dealing with Eldar, hold up and cover because, well, the Heavy Flamer. So you get the idea. I'm kind of just repeating and rambling on now with Huron Blackheart, but I think it's a, a pretty solid um, HQ. I think as far as point costs go, I think, again, this is another character that is, is well point costed. Um, that's just me personally. If you compare them to a Chaos Lord, you know, a Chaos Lord, depending upon how you equip them, could be uh, cheaper or more expensive than Huron Blackheart. You don't get the special Tyrant's Claw that he has. I personally, um, I see why he has the the Power Axe. You know, they redid, for example, Asmodee's model in the Dark Angels. I feel maybe they should have redone Huron a little bit. Maybe um, if they're going to make the Tyrant's Claw that cool. He doesn't really have need of the Power Axe, again, unless he's going up against something like a Terminator, where he's going to really want to negate that armor. Um, so maybe I would have uh, given him something else, or like just made him just have the Tyrant's Claw and another, like, just something else entirely, or, or maybe ditch the Power Axe, make the other hand have a cool pose of doing something, and maybe drop his point cost. Uh, a few points. That's just me personally because I don't see many people using that power axe really in comparison to the Tyrant's Claw. But anyways, uh, it's there if he needs it. And that's it for Huron Blackheart in Legends of 40k. So I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for sticking through this. It went a little bit longer than I wanted to because I kind of rambled a bit. But hey, whatevs, right? Anyways, take it easy.